Welcome to week 32 of full-time reselling in Australia. My name is Michaela. Welcome to the channel where we talk all about finding items secondhand, saving them from landfill and flipping them online for a profit and some little eco-friendly tips along the way as well. If this sounds interesting to you, then hit that subscribe button and like the video to see more. Obviously the background is the reality of reselling. It can be pretty messy. <laughs> it's organized chaos. So it is Monday morning and I have dropped off my Australia Post parcels. I've dropped off my Sendal parcels. I have done some admin work with my banking. Now I'm jumping into listing the items that I photographed on Friday just to get me ahead for the week. I'll show you behind the scenes of me listing my items. I use this amazing app called Send Anywhere. You can download it on desktop on Android and iPhones. Just select the items you want to send and it gives you a little pass key. Type that in, press enter and it directly saves to your downloads. This is how I get all of my photos onto my desktop ready to list from my computer. Okay, so listings are up for the day and now I am going through some stuff that I'm going to list tomorrow, but I need to clean it and organize it first. Most days I finish sort of my work day at around five o'clock because that's when I go and pick up my husband from work. I don't usually want to work after that. But today he actually has book club. He goes and they have dinner together and stuff. So I've got the night to myself and I really want to smash out some more listings coming up to Christmas. So I'm going to keep working tonight because I can. I picked up this Canon camera on the weekend at a garage sale, which was part of the garage sale trail. This is the model number, but it's a Canon and it's a film camera. Now my rule is always pick up film cameras because they're doing really well at the moment. The first thing I always check is the battery compartment. This one is really nice and clean. There's no corrosion. There's no old battery sitting in there either. The next thing I'll check is the film compartment. And again, it looks pretty clean, everything looks really nice in there. But what I'm gonna do is jump over to the reselling enthusiast on Instagram. She knows all about cameras. So if you have any questions or queries, go on over to her Instagram and check it out. I'm gonna follow one of her reels, which goes through how to test a film camera um, to make sure this bad boy works. Good morning, it is Tuesday and I have just gotten ready all of the things that I'm going to list today. I've cleaned them, organized them, put them into their lots. This is what I've got, bananas and pajamas, some baby stuff, games, books, more games, these gorgeous mugs, a few book bundles, these like outback romance novels. They do really well in bundles, especially these ones that have like multiple stories in one. That's a whole bundle of those. I've got more of these Woolworths bricks. When these first came out, they sold really well on eBay, but the bubble burst very quickly. I don't expect to get anything more than probably 20 bucks for these, but I'd rather them go and be used. So I put everything here on my workbench and and then come over here and photograph it and then if it's closed I've got my mannequin on this side. I don't really like this setup. I've changed it so many times. I had whiteboards and now I've gone to the core flute instead. At least it's a bit lighter. It's a bit easier for me to move around. It's just so big and bulky. So I picked this table up the other day and I'm thinking I might start using this against the white wall for smaller items. I don't know. I'm gonna keep playing around with it. testing out this camera last night I put new batteries in and everything worked the flash the shutter was opening and closing it was taking photos did the rewind as if the film was in it and then I opened it closed it back up and now it's not working so I'm a bit upset what I'm thinking is that the camera knows that there's no film inside and so it's it's not working because it knows that the only way to test that is to use some film so I've jumped onto eBay grabbed a single roll of film just so I can test this out I've been really Really lucky so far with film cameras where everything that I've bought has worked everything on it has worked it's been super clean but with this one I'm gonna have to test it with film to make sure if it works it's about a $200 camera if it doesn't I can still sell it for parts for about $40 fingers crossed it works I'll update you in another video 
It is time to do some shipping. I ship on Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday. So I'll take you through what I've sold for the last two days. Got this nice little gold spot table 8 top. Katmandu jacket. Gorgeous maxi dress from Forever New. Little button up from Sportscraft. This is a silk dress from Wilt Witchery. Just a little dress from Dottie. I only picked it up because of the style. Wherever the tag is, it's in there. <laughs> this jacket is really cool. It is cashmere and wool. And it's still got the button. This rockabilly dress. And lastly, just this pair of Gap jeans. I would definitely not pick these up, but they were part of a lot. I also saw this book. I listed this one this afternoon. It's a brand new Noddy coloring in book. Very cute. 1993. And it's sold. So I bring all of my shipping up to my kitchen to process it. Got my compostable labels, my recyclable thank you cards, old newspapers for fill, old cardboard boxes that I'm reusing, and my items. So let's pack them up. Good morning, it is now Thursday. Yesterday I just spent the day listing, 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 really wanting to get some good quality stock up for Christmas coming up. Today is pretty much the same. I've got a heap of stuff that I got from the op shops recently that has tags, so it's new with tags. I really wanna get that listed, hoping it'll go for Christmas presents. And also, if you're following me on Instagram, I've been giving you updates on my tomatoes and my pineapples. They're going really well, and my tomatoes have finally started turning red. So I'll give you a quick little update on the so this is my office in here and then I come out to the backyard and these are my tomatoes. Look, they're turning red. That's very exciting. I've never grown tomatoes successfully before. Ah, here's my inventory manager. Hot puppy girl. And over here we have my pineapples. And it's finally starting to look like a mini pineapple. So cute. And this is the second one. So I planted these uh, about three years ago. And this should take about six months to turn into a full pineapple. The plan one day is to have a full veggie patch, fruit trees and chickens. But for now, we're just doing what we can with our time and our money. And they're my little projects at the moment, which I'm just very excited about. Because at the end of the day, it's all about what you can do. And that's what we can do at the moment. So until we get to sort of mini farm stage... I'm, I'm really happy with the progress that um, we have in our garden so far. Bailey gets a Kong with peanut butter for morning tea. Keeps her very distracted while I'm working. I'm listing this dress today and I just wanted to give it its time because it is glorious. Stitches Melbourne, it is vintage, most likely made in Australia. Just look at that. Best part is it is dead stock. It's brand new, never been worn. Amazing. Here's some more items that I'm photographing today. Just thought I'd go through why I've picked them up. This is a gorgeous orientic top, really lightweight cotton, but it's the patterns that sell orientic pieces. Brave and True is like a boutique brand, but it has a nice following now, and this is a great in season pattern. Well, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? It is a De Cuba dress, which the brand itself is pretty good, and most De Cuba things I do pick up. But it is new with tags, and check out the price on that one. Now, I can never say this brand name. Leona Edmiston. Got it. All right. I always want to put an N in there somewhere. <laughs> Great brand to pick up, and this pattern in particular is really beautiful. It is a size 10, which is smaller. Um, size 14s and 12s do better, but I think it'll, it'll go quite well anyway. This is a Tiger Lily dress. Tiger Lily. It is a pretty good brand, and obviously... Originally, they sell for crazy amounts of money. I don't know. This style, meh. I hate it. <laughs> I'm just giving it a go. I'm not too fussed if it doesn't sell very quickly. This one is gorgeous. You would have seen this in an Instagram video I recently. So this is cashmere and wool. I'll show you the tag. So if you're in an op shop looking at items and you're not sure what to look for, head on up 
the side of the skirt it does feel funny I know I'm, I still feel funny doing it look up the skirt of the dress <laughs> and you will have these manufacturer tags so this one 75% virgin wool and 25% angora up oh. There you go. So it's Angora, not Cashmere. So that is even better. Angora is even better than Cashmere to sell um, in terms of quality. This is a pretty fancy brand. I've never heard of it before. Comps are amazing. So yeah, pretty cool piece. This is a sports craft basic. Oh, that needs a good, good lint roll. <laughs> Just a plain black vest. Sportscraft is a great brand to sell, but it is 100% Australian merino wool. You can't go wrong with wool. It just instantly bumps up the price and usually sells quite quickly. So these two things together, great pickup. This is just a basic Tommy Hilfiger top, but it's a, quite a nice one. Feels really nice. No issues with it. Nice little piece. It does have the size tag cut out of it, so I'll just have to estimate that and put it in the description. And we cannot ever leave RM Williams behind. Nice old tag there, 100% cotton. It's got the little Longhorn logo on it. The one teeny tiny little issue is that it has a little hole in the front. I will put that in the description and also take a photo of it, but a nice easy piece to put in my store. So when you get home from the op shop and you've got tags like this, there's a few things that I do to make sure that this little piece of waste goes to the right destination. So this one, you can see it's shiny, plastic coated paper. And unfortunately that cannot be recycled and it cannot be composted either because plastic cannot be composted. Wormies cannot eat it. So this one unfortunately does have to go to landfill, but some other tags, like this Anglican one where it is just paper, that can be composted. So what I've got over here is a little compost jar and I just build up a little collection and then pop it into my compost bin in the garden when it's ready. And then this little jar is full of like Finney's tags. I get a collection going and then take them back to the store and they can reuse them. And the other thing I put in here is the clear tea tags. These are the tea tags that I'm talking about. They're tiny little pieces of plastic. They're a huge nuisance and I wish there was a better way of putting tags on clothes, but this is cheap and fast. What I do is I pop them in the same jar. You can probably see them all down the bottom. Yep. And I'm collecting them and I'll send them to a private recycling company who can actually turn these into bowls and all sorts of other things using just this specific piece of plastic. So once I get a large enough amount, I'll send it off to him. It's been a big day of listing today. So now it's on to postage. I've got eight things going out. So I jump onto my sendal portal and ship them out. Oh my gosh, I was just packaging up my items and I jumped onto Instagram quickly and Hero Packaging has this amazing new collaboration with an indigenous artist and also some of the money goes to a children's charity. I love this. I gotta grab some. Hey, I got some. Woohoo! I can't wait to receive these. I ship everything 100% plastic free and today I have six ceramic stoneware mugs that I'm going to ship plastic free. Most people would wrap these in tons and tons of bubble wrap but I'll show you exactly how I ship these and I've never had a problem. I've sent out dozens of mugs and plates, breakables and have never used bubble wrap. So I'll show you how I do this. So these are the mugs that I'm sending out and aren't they gorgeous? So I've got a nice big box here. I've started with a layer of scrunched up newspaper and I've got some of this hex wrap that I've kept from my own online shopping. I have other paper and then I have this crinkled cardboard which sort of works just like bubble wrap. I picked this up off the side of the road. Um, there was rolls and rolls of it for free and I have months worth of it. But you can pick this sort of stuff up at other small local businesses. You can see if Bunnings has any. I know this is used heavily in furniture moving, furniture sales as well. So just ask around, see if anybody has some. So what I've done is I've got a mug here. I've wrapped it in two layers of newspaper. 
I've also used compostable washi tape. I have a heap of these little washi tapes. They are just rice paper, so they break down really quickly, but they're great for wrapping up things like this. So I've wrapped it in two layers of newspaper, then I'm gonna wrap it in this cardboard. I'll stack them all together and I'll shove um, balls of newspaper in around them and make sure they can't move too much and they'll be good to go. All done. I'll just put a layer of newspaper on top but these babies aren't going anywhere. And the final two touches, water activated paper tape and compostable labels. It is now Friday. There is a lot happening today. Firstly, I'm having breakfast and then I'm gonna sort out this garbage bag of clothes that's sitting right in front of me. <laughs> I have a neighbor who drops off stuff every now and then and our deal is $30 per garbage bag of clothes. And I've always earned really good profit from that deal and now he's telling all his friends about it. So every now and then I get a random bag of clothes that turn up at my front door. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through that first. And then I've got a couple of other things I need to test and try out. And we're getting our new fridge delivered, which is very exciting. So I'll take you through that once it arrives. And then I'm going to a concert tonight with my mum. So that will be really fun. Okay, so we've got a lot of Y2K pieces. This Y2K jacket, just polyester. This is a really cool old Colorado jacket. Again, just polyester, but it feels like suede on the outside. This is like an Edward Cullen jacket, but it is wool blend. So 60% wool. Just a little H&M dress, little forever new dress. Just a little black dress. I haven't looked up this brand, but it's just a nice little simple one. Forever new, another little Y2K jacket. Lovely fur hood. <laughs> Now this is a Y2K jacket, oh my gosh. Super long, I can imagine the Spice Girls wearing this. Very cool. It's got the old tag too, very cool. And just some boutique dresses. And then this cute little fit and flare dress. Again, just a little boutique one. I'll just quickly mention that this stuff is not stuff I would usually pick up. Not high end, high profit stuff. But when it just arrives at my front door and it works out to about $2 a piece, hell yeah, I'll take it. Okay, so checking this camera the other night, everything was working. The shutter was opening and closing, it was turning on and off, it was actually taking the photos, the flash was working, and then I checked the rewind function, opened it up, closed it again, there's no film in there, and now it's not doing anything. So what I'm hoping is that it is like a film sensitive camera and it only works when there's film in there. So I jumped onto eBay and grabbed a roll of film and it arrived yesterday. So I think it was like one or two days, which is amazing. So we're gonna open it up, pop it in and keep our fingers crossed. So unfortunately it's not working. So I've put the film in, I've turned it on. Shutter, you can see is still closed in there. Um, it's on now. I'll turn it off. Turning it back on. Yeah. So, not taking anything. It's not loading the film either. And the flash doesn't work either. So, this is a real bummer. I can still sell it for parts for about 40 bucks, but as working, it was going to be worth about 200. Anyway, I'll get this listed still. 40 bucks from 10 is better than nothing. And now I have a roll of film that I can test future cameras with. Another investment I made this week was a CPU for my computer system. So the issue that I'm having is that if I have multiple programs open on my computer, it's running at like 80 to 100 degrees. If I just have my video software open, it'll run at 100 degrees and constantly turn off. I can't have that happening and it's just not good enough to work with on a desktop computer. Yes, I've had my IT guy look at it. What I'm thinking is that like we're in a pretty old house. I think the power is just not, you know, set up to handle everything that I have going on in my setup. So I got this CPU so that I have a steady flow of electricity and that hopefully everything runs smoothly and I can have multiple programs open and my video software open and it goes smoothly. So that's fingers crossed. We're gonna plug it in now. It's been charging overnight and we'll see how it runs. So this is the work of running a business that nobody talks about, nobody sees. 
So I've pulled everything out, I've vacuumed. I've then had to pull every cord out and work out which bit goes to which. I've plugged in the important parts to the CPU and then I've plugged in the non-important parts to this. But I have this one plug that has to go in here, but it doesn't fit because of, that's the wrong one because of these little bits sticking out. That's it, that's all that's stopping me from putting it together, turning it on and getting on with my day. That piece of little plastic. So I've got a file and I've got a hammer and we're gonna work it out. It worked, I can't believe it. Oh my God, I filed it down and it's gone. Oh my God, I'm so happy, let's plug it in. Hell yeah. Go me, well done. It is on. Now for the most satisfying part. Hell yeah. So the CPU hasn't worked. Um, computer is still running at around 80 degrees when I just have like videos just, just open in the video editing software. So a bit frustrating for such a big investment. It hasn't changed a thing on my computer. I don't know what I'm going to do if I get a new computer or if I get this one upgraded. I just, I just want to edit my videos on a computer that works. Shouldn't be too hard. Apparently it is. Anyway, I'll work that out next few days because I really want to get it sorted and not have to worry about my video editing software shutting down every 10 minutes, which is what has been happening. So I just got an email from eBay saying that from now on, if you send less than 95% of your items untracked when they're listed as tracked items, you payments will be put on hold. For me, I use templates when listing and so I'm automatically just keeping the postage type on every listing, which is usually sendal. And then small items are just send untracked. But I guess for the buyer, it looks like they've got tracking included when they pay for the item and perspective of eBay of why they're implementing this new thing. So I'm going to go through all my items that I send as a large letter and untracked and actually edit those listings so that it's very clear to the buyer and eBay and I'm not going to get my payments taken. Okay, so I've just found my first lot of items that I have listed that I'll only send untracked. So I've done a bulk editing on those items and I'll change everything to Australia Post Domestic Regular Letter Untracked. So this tells eBay that it will be untracked and the seller, um, sorry, the buyer expects that as well and I'm not going to get dinged. Hey, our new fridge arrived. So double doors, well, quad doors actually. Not great energy rating. We really wanted to go with something that was higher energy rating at least from a better company but we were really dictated by this space in our kitchen so you can see it fits pretty snug quite a short space for a fridge and that really dictated what we could actually have we've been really lucky so far with our home that most of the items in our home are actually second hand or passed down so the fridge that we had was my family fridge that I had grown up with and it was 18 years old and then the beer fridge that we're using out the back is Curtis's original fridge from his very first apartment. So we've been very lucky that we haven't needed to buy anything like upgrades like this and it was time to just buy new. This for us is an investment and we do not expect to get a new fridge for a very large number of years. Um, this will be our family fridge once kids come along. So yeah, happy to spend a bit of an extra money to get the sides that we'll need for a long time instead of upgrading again in a few years time. The waste associated with a purchase like this is also something I heavily consider. So as you can see, it's covered in plastic. And if we open it up, it's full of plastic wrap everywhere throughout it. This plastic wrap I can recycle via Red Cycle, which is great. I'm so glad that they're around and we can do that now. Unfortunately, styrofoam cannot be recycled. And all of the other waste that uh, was associated with this fridge, the delivery people took it with them. So I don't know where that waste is gonna end up. I hope that the cardboard box is gonna get recycled, but I don't know. So 
all I can do is what I can do with what's in front of me. Just wanted to give you that little insight because being eco-friendly doesn't mean you have to be super duper strict on yourself and not buy anything brand new. It's about being mindful and considering the things that you do purchase. And so for us, our fridge had died and so we needed a new one. So I just wanted to give you that little insight because my home is my office and so this is all part of my business. Okay, it is photographing and listing time. So I've got my playlist on. Let's go, let's smash through these. Every Friday I try to do cleaning in my office. So today we've got the vacuum out and I'll wipe down all the benches too. So let's break down the week. I listed 150 items. I sold 46 items. The amount of resources that we diverted out of landfill and back into the circular economy, which is a combination of the reused packaging materials and the secondhand items themselves was approximately 28 kilograms. That's gonna be it for this week. I've had a really good week, got lots of listings done and lots of other things done. So that's a pretty typical week for me. Thank you so much for watching. And if you did like this video, give it a like. If you wanna see more reseller tips and eco-friendly tips, then hit the subscribe button as well. I'm off to a Wendy Matthews concert. I am so excited. I grew up with Wendy Matthews. This is free because it's part of the New South Wales State Government Bushfire Resilience Grant that our area has received. So amazing. Gonna go enjoy my Friday. I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Treasure hunting. See you later.